If you've tuned in for all kids, um, this video might not be particularly interesting for you, but keep watching because I think you'll be fascinated by this plant and I'm going to explain why I grow it. This is Pamianthi peruviana and it comes from Peru and parts of Bolivia. It was discovered in 1926, or at least um, that's when it was first recorded, and plants were brought back to this country. I've had it living here for about the last two years, and that's why I started off filming here, so that you can see where it normally grows. Now in here, as a lot of you will know, they're all, nearly all the plants in here are orchids, or they've just got one or two exceptions. And this is what orchid growers would call an intermediate uh, greenhouse. So um, not particularly warm, not particularly cold, but quite humid. And I wasn't sure whether it would get enough light down here. It does get quite a lot of indirect light, although it doesn't get the sun. And it seems to have been perfectly happy. And I'm absolutely thrilled because this is the first time it's flowered for me. I've had it for about three years and it has grown really well. Now, before I say any more, I'm going to reconvene at a more comfortable position so that I can talk to you about it. Right, well, that's better. Um, the reason that I grow it down on the floor is basically because it's a very large plant and um, that was the only place that I was able to accommodate it. Um, originally, I had it growing up higher when it was still a small plant. Um, the main reason that I'm fascinated by it is that, although it's a bulb, it actually grows epiphytically in trees in its native habitat. Now, there isn't very much information around about it, apart from the fact it says it's epiphytic. It is now presumed to be extinct in the wild, although I think that means that it hasn't actually been recorded um, recently or since it was first discovered. Hopefully, there are still some left in the wild. So, it needs basically the same conditions as orchids, which is why I give it exactly the same treatment as nearly all my orchids. You can see that I've got it in... Um, let's just take this outer pot off. See, I've got it growing in a pot with holes in to give it plenty of air movement to the roots. And you can see it has a fabulous root system. They are sort of a bit like some orchid roots in a way, in that they're sort of quite hairy. Now, although it's called epiphytic, I don't know whether it actually grows clinging to trees. I would suspect that more likely it grows in the sort of debris that accumulates on the top of large branches or in the sort of uh, angle between a branch and a trunk. And I've repotted this three times and on each occasion I've tended to sort of set it a bit more upright but no, every time it bends over and that apparently I gather is the way that it grows in the wild because it kind of makes sense if it's growing out from the, a tree branch um, it needs to get as much light as possible so it would be pointless if it grew the leaves upright. Gradually as the old leaves um, become old they gradually sort of wither and die off and leave these sort of papery husks around the base of the stem. The other, apart from it being epiphytic, which is not what you expect with um, most bulbs, the other huge um, sort of attraction for me was the beautiful, absolutely exquisite flowers have a also exquisite perfume, really a lovely sort of lily-like perfume, not the sort of overpowering, sort of cloying, heavy scent that you get with some sort of oriental and trumpet lilies, but a much more interesting and complex smell. It smells nearly all the time, certainly during the day, but most abundantly in the evenings after dark. So one assumes, and it says on the internet, that it's moth-pollinated although very little, as I say, is known about it. Um, what else can I say about it? Yes, the, so as I say, it's basically just growing in um, medium orchid bark because the, being an epiphyte, the, 
key, as with many, all kids, is that it mustn't remain wet and soggy for very long. So it's a very free draining compost. Um, the humidity in here is very high for my orchids. And it just gets dunked, um, well, in the summer, once a week in uh, rainwater with a weak feed. And in the winter, less often, and um, perhaps with little or no feed. But differing from the orchids, I do actually sprinkle about a teaspoonful of slow release um, fertilizer granules on the surface of the compost at the beginning of the growing season, just so that it gives it a bit more uh, nutrients than the orchids would like. It is very rare in cultivation. Not many people have it, and I feel very lucky to be growing it. I was fortunate enough to be given a small plant by a friend of mine who knew that I was absolutely fascinated with orchids, and particularly orchids that have a beautiful scent. So that's why he said, oh, Howard, you should really grow one of these. And the interesting thing is that after a while, apparently it produces stolons from the base of the plant, which grow out and form small new plants. This hasn't shown any signs of it yet, um, but it has, a, it has at least flowered. So I'm hoping that mine will start doing that eventually, because plants are very rarely offered for sale. The other way that you might be able to start growing it is from seed. Now, there are some very informative and interesting videos on YouTube produced by a lady in Ireland who, and I'll put the, the link um, down below so that you can have a look at her videos. She has grown um, it from seed on two occasions and brought one of them up to flowering. It takes about four or five years from seed, but it's apparently it's not too difficult to grow them from seed and they grow really rapidly. In fact, I would say that they're much easier to grow than a lot of the orchids that I have. Oh, and lastly, apparently the flowers are very long lasting. Now, the first flowers opened um, over a week ago now and it's showing absolutely no sign of deteriorating. Smell absolutely gorgeous. So, I'm not sure when I'll be putting this video out, but by the time that I do, or in the notes underneath, I'll let you know how long the flowers last. So I hope you've found that really interesting, um, and I hope to see you in my next video, which will almost certainly be about orchids. So cheerio from now.